Good morning, friends. Welcome back to day four of Camp One Clap on the One Clap Speech and Debate podcast. I'm your camp director, Lyle Wiley, and today, Counselor Ella Goodman and Counselor Sharina Villegas begin their four-part series, Croc Hiking with Easy Platform. A quick reminder, check the One Clap socials for today's social media challenge topic. Also, Keep studying your ABCs of debate with Professor Graham and Kevin's new episodes that are released daily. So we'll be getting details about our stars of Easy Platform in next week's episode when I share their camp bios. So for today, we're just going to leap right in to their episode, and you're going to learn a little bit about Ella and Sharina along the way. So all right, campers, strap up your hiking crocs, get your walking stick, throw some trail mix in your pocket. It's time for croc hiking with easy platform sharina villegas and ella goodman are here with me today the easy platformers so I, we're at camp one clap thanks for being here appreciate you both being here i'd like to know what your favorite camp activity is to get us started out i think probably like sitting around the campfire talking with people you know you get into the really deep philosophical <laughs> conversations way too late in the night <laughs> Mm. nice that's, that's deep <laughs> i think <laughs> i think that my favorite camp activity would probably be like making s'mores and making food and like you know this deep philosophical um conversations except between like me and my sister it's just my sister going insane and me making fun of her so <laughs> nice so we've got philosophical conversations on both sides but yours are more aimed towards like s'mores and making fun of your sister mm-hmm. perfect good dream <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> so we're going to get to know more about both of you over the next four episodes of our little segment here. But uh, today, let's find out how nerdy you consider yourselves to be. I think that this might be a little bit more fun if we have Ella talk about Sharina's nerdiness level and vice versa. So let's start okay. with Ella. So on a scale of one to 10, where would you put Sharina on the nerd scale? A 6.8. That's really specific. <laughs> Why a 6.8? What In what way is she and is she not nerdy? Um. Well, first of all, she's in speech. So <laughs> most speech kids are pretty nerdy. She's also an oratory fanatic, you know. That's like a lot of times she's just like in the corner of the speech room watching oratory <laughs> final rounds, like <laughs> scribbling a bunch of stuff in like a notebook or like aggressively typing on a computer. <laughs> um. That, that makes me want to round it up to a seven a little bit. Mm. But I don't know. 6.8 or seven. Okay. One of those. Okay, fair. <laughs> Does Sharina nerd out on any, like, movie, TV, books? Uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, what's, what does she nerd out on? <laughs> I think anything that she likes, she'll just get, like, really <laughs> obsessed with and, like, be really, like, just into it for, like, a month or however long and then move on to the next one. <laughs> And get like really into that thing. <laughs> What's the flavor of the month? What is, what is she really into right now? Do you know? Is it, the last one I knew was Avatar. Yeah. Oh, okay. the animated Avatar. series. Yeah. Oh, my wife has been watching all of those over the last couple of months. Which. Yeah, I love it. It's so good. Yeah, it's Literal masterpiece. Literal masterpiece. All right. Yes. All right. Okay, so. Let's hear from Sharina about Ella. What do you think? Where does Ella fall on the nerd scale? Okay. Ella tried to give me a 6.8, but I'm going to just go with a solid 7. <laughs> All right. Um, kind of for the same reasons that she said that I was. Like, she's really obsessed with info. I mean, if you think, like, this is the only, like, this is the main event Ella has done for all four years of high school because she's so committed to info. It's like kind of insane. So I think that definitely puts her on the seven on that um, nerd spectrum. (laughs) Um, But also when it comes to like shows and different things like that, we'll just have like these conversations where we're just, I guess, like talk about like shows or like send each like videos, like the Pacific show or whatever. We're like um, really obsessed with at that point. And we'll just get really into it, you know. Nice. So it shifts what it is that you kind of are interested in or passionate about 
but <laughs> the, the result is always the same. It's intense nerding yeah. out about those, those things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, <laughs> so do you know what Ella is nerding out about right now? <laughs> well, um, recently I got her into the show Bridgerton. <laughs> So we've just been like obsessing over that show. We're so excited for the next season yeah. to come out. We've been sending each other like TikToks back and forth mm -hmm. of like predictions, what we think is going to happen, all of that. Um, yeah, that's basically the obsession of the month, I think, yeah. for Ella. I'll like open my TikTok messages and I have <laughs> like 83 unread, like or unseen TikToks from Shamina. And they're all about Bridgerton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, that's really cool. Uh, and, and by the way, being nerdy about something is cool, right? Like that's, we, yeah. we wear it as a badge of honor. So a 6.8 and a 7. All right. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's time to, to jump into some platform goodies, I think. Right. Uh, we are going to, every time that we, we meet, we're going to just get a tip or a trick or a mini lesson from each of you about oratory and informative. Uh, we'll have Sharina speak to original oratory, and then Ella will have you speak to informative. If that's cool with you, you both. So we'll start with OO today, oratory. Trina, what do you got for us? What's a banger, tip, trick, mini lesson that you want to share for today? So my first tip I have is picking a topic, which is probably one of the most important parts of platform. So when it comes to picking a topic specifically for oratory, you like have to pick a topic that you're super passionate or like really care about not something that you think will just do well and so you can get nice fa fancy shiny awards because <laughs> that's obviously what speech and debate's all about talking about things that you really care about like usually when people don't know what they're gonna pick for an oratory topic the first thing i usually tell them is to think about something that makes them really angry because usually there's a lot of things that are wrong with the world that we want to change and i know there's a lot of voices out there that want to speak their mind and i think it's the perfect place to do it so like and something that is different from info you can give your actual personal opinion on why you think this this really matters and why it needs to be changed and if it's not like anger then talk about something that you're really passionate about like beauty filters like colorism and you know even death you know but just something that you're really passionate about will make it easier for you to write and actually talk about it and speak about it for like two whole days. Awesome. Um, yeah. Sorry, you can continue. I was just going to okay. say, <laughs> it just really is cool that there's a chance for advocacy in, in oratory, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and also another thing that goes with that is that your topic should have like a uniqueness factor. You know, oratory is like, the original format of, of like the whole entire speech world so this is your own your own like voice and everything you get to like project to the world and or like you know the random six people that you have to have in that round <laughs> that day um but because of that it's like what makes this event so unique but it also it's also what makes this event so difficult because a lot of the times you can hear topics over and over and over and they'll be like the same things. So you have to have that like uniqueness part of your speech. Like you can like, obviously everyone knows about sexism, homophobia and racism, but what you have to do, especially with oratory is for people to have that unique perspective, maybe try and like get into specifics or some, or have a different take on what people may not have heard before. Like, for my sophomore speech, I talked, I wanted to talk about colorism. And so my coach told me, okay, well, people kind of maybe don't know about colorism, but what's a more unique take you can take on that? So what I did is I talked about colorism specifically within the Asian community. And I just talked about my experiences with that. And it gave a unique um, take to what people probably haven't heard before on like racism. So. Awesome. I think that's some really, really good advice. And it's really tricky. Like, Picking a topic mm -hmm. is maybe one of the hardest things, too, about doing an oratory. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. Tough act to follow. Uh, but we're going to go to Ella, and we'll see what Ella has for us for info. You have a gold nugget that you'd like to share for today? So I think when it comes to info, the, like, three, I guess, pillars you could call them are head, heart, and humor. So I think they're all really important to have in, in an informative speech. Um, 
head is like the facts, statistics, citations, just like the, you know, informative aspect of the speech, like the whatever facts you're trying to get across. And they're kind of like <clears throat> the backbone of the speech. You know, you like need those to have it, um, but they can't be the only thing you have. You also need to have like the heart, which is the universal humanity, you, you know, why it's important and giving people like a reason to care about your topic is going to make them automatically much more interested. And then <laughs> the third one is humor. You need like jokes, you need happier moments, especially a lot of speeches I see, they can just kind of like tell a lot of really dark facts. And so it's nice to have like those lighter moments in it. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that having a balance of like all these, you know, can just keep audiences more like informed, engaged, and also entertained, you know, it, having a variety uh, just makes a better speech. Yeah. I think it's super important too, to have that, that mix of like entertainment value and learning. So it just, mm -hmm. it's just kind of like the sweet spot for informative. Great stuff. Just to let our listeners know why you two are, you know, qualified to speak to this. Ella, tell us a little bit about like your success in informative real quick. Well, I'll go in like chronological order. <laughs> um, my freshman year, I, I don't know, I was really scared to do info because it was like a solo event and I thought that it would be better if I had another person. But as I got into it, I like was quickly like pushed by my coach to get out of novice competition and get into varsity stuff, which I think helped me learn a lot. And then I ended up uh, qualifying to nationals in info that year. And then also winning state, which was pretty cool. <laughs> um, Very cool. Sophomore year, I I did a lot better like in state. I think I won like six or seven tournaments, which was crazy. Um, and then I was in state finals again, which was really cool. And then junior year I didn't info again and then one state for the second time which was pretty crazy so you've definitely had a lot of success in informative speaking which is awesome and sharina uh oratory i waited until you took a bite to ask you this question but you <laughs> definitely have had some success in oratory too uh how's that gone yeah. for you actually i Unlike Ella, I didn't start out in oratory. I actually started out in drama just because my friends are doing it, so I would do it too. <laughs> so, but um, my sophomore year, I finally decided to take a stab at it, and I really, really liked it. Um, I was like in district finals. I think I was placing. I was doing pretty well, but obviously, I haven't had like I the most chronological success. I don't know if that's the right word, but anyways. Like I haven't, I'm not always like winning every like tournament. Like this year, I don't even think my success was like, I wasn't placing or like doing as well as I thought I would at tournaments, but it really took like some drive and, <laughs> and um like the right mentality for me to get to that point where I was really reaching success. And obviously it wasn't easy, but I think I've done pretty well. i um, broken at some national tournaments. I was a um, state champion <laughs> and yeah, so I think I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> you two are so humble. Uh, you're both amazing platformers. But there you have it, some tips and tricks. Next time, tune in. We're going to hear more about Ella and Sharina's speech and debate, superhero origin stories, and more ideas for how to pitch your platformer tent with perfection. Thanks so much to Camp Counselors Ella Goodman and Sharina Villegas of Easy Platform for sharing some tasty morsels of their brilliance with us on a croc hike here at Camp One Clap. They will return for more croc hiking on Episode 2 next Friday. Tomorrow is another exciting day at camp. We'll be whipping up some Saturday Supplemental S'mores with Counselor Bo Annan. Also, Professor Graham and Kevin's ABC of Debate shall continue to entertain and educate with yet another breathtaking episode. Remember, social media challenges are live for every day of camp this August. Folks have been posting a lot of really great stuff. Keep it rolling, campers. So until tomorrow, may all of your speech and debate adventures be happy trails. For Camp One Clap, this is Camp Director Wiley signing off.